Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now is a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and you won't be out any of our amazing future content. Now, in today's video, we are talking getting your skin ready for winter. More importantly, the changes you might want to consider making to your skincare routine as we segue seamlessly into the winter months here in the Northern Hemisphere. I do totally appreciate I have loads of viewers which come from like Australia and places in the Southern Hemisphere that probably just going into summer right now. So don't worry, keep this video on tap and you know, six months later, you might wanna give it a watch. But this is all about how we can tailor our um, skincare routines to get the best out of them for winter. Now, I don't wanna shock, I know some of you will have been shocked by the title when you saw this video and thought, uh, winter, we're kind of still just enjoying summer. It is still gorgeous here in the UK. I have put a jumper on for the first time in like ages. So I know that autumn, fall, whatever you call it, is on its way. And I'm happy about that. I actually adore, adore, adore autumn or fall, wherever you are in the world, whatever you call it. It's just to me, I love the smells. I love the coziness of it, the pumpkin spiced, everything that goes on in our lives. I love, love, love autumn. And I think it's fantastic. However, as we transition through autumn to winter, our skin does need some subtle changes, and that's what I'm gonna go through in this routine today. Before you panic, you don't actually need to toss out your whole routine and start again for winter. I, I don't get this theory. I hear it so often on YouTube and on um, some of the beauty vlogs that you need to change everything up in winter. You really don't. You don't need a separate summer and winter skincare routine. There's just some subtle things, products you might want to change. And that's why I'm doing it kind of early, because you know September isn't in any means winter. You know, the reason I'm doing it now is because you might want to start incorporating some new products in your routine in the coming months. So this gives you a chance to use up the products that you might want to maybe give a pass to until next summer and then introduce the new ones into your life. So it's a gentle process rather than a, you know, suddenly on the first of November you have to change down tools, change everything in your life and your routine. This is more of a gradual process. And the reason I don't think we need to change that much is our skin doesn't change a whole lot in winter. Yes, it tends to get drier. That's led by the fact we have the heating on, which can dry the skin. The weather tends to be more drying on our skin, particularly more wind and um, the colder air can be quite drying on our skin. We do get a slight increase in sensitivity. Some of that's linked to that dryness and those weather changes, but you can see a slight increase in sensitivity. And because of that dryness, we tend to retain, our body seems to cling onto those dead skin cells for longer, which means our skin can appear a little bit more dull it winter. So there are some things we can do to get rid of that winter skin and keep glowing throughout the year. We don't want to just focus on, you know, everyone wants to be glowing for, to the gods for their holiday in, you know, August. And then they're kind of happy to be dull and lifeless when it comes to winter skin. That shouldn't be the case. We should be glowing throughout the year. And hopefully if you take these few simple steps, you'll be able to glow to the gods whatever month of the year you're in. Now, let's start with cleansers. Cleansing is super important, whether it's summer or winter, but I do think choosing the right cleanser for the season is really important. In summer, we all tend to be a little bit more oily. We tend to be a little bit warmer. The humidity's there. So we tend to reach for gel cleansers. We might do a double cleanse with a balm followed by a gel, but gel cleansers are our life and what we go to. In winter, I tend to go for more of a cream cleanser. Now, cream cleansers are fantastic because whether you do a double cleanse, so you do a balm and then a cream cleanser, or you just use it as your standalone cleanser, they're super effective. They're just more hydrating than gel cleansers. They're less stripping and they're fantastic for inclusion in a winter routine. If you want to still do a double cleanse, be my guest, go for it and do a double cleanse. Stick with your current balm and your favorite balm. But instead of using a gel cleanser as your wash off second step, I would then reach for something like a cream cleanser. My absolute favorite at the moment is this, which is the Sanskrit Sarpanins by um, Neod. I love this because it has got gentle surfactants in there. So you still get a foaming. So you're not doing away completely with the foaming and it's not a total change, but it's so, so much less stripping than a traditional gel cleanser. It also smells divine. Like. It smells like cocoa butter and it is quite autumnal. And I can imagine this, you're sipping your pumpkin spice latte, you're lathering, I don't know why you'd be drinking a latte when you're doing your skincare. That doesn't matter, forget that. It goes really well with a pumpkin spice latte. It smells just really like cocoa buttery and lovely. This is a fantastic, fantastic um, second step cleanser because it takes off all the remaining dirt, debris and SPF, but it will leave your skin hydrated and fresh and clean for the next steps. If this is 20 pounds here in the UK, 25 um, dollars in the US, definitely worth the price point because it's got some really nice technologies in here, particularly the gentle surfactants, which do push the price up a little bit. If you want to go for something a little bit cheaper, you could just reach for the ordinary square lane cleanser. It's boring, but it does the job. It doesn't leave your skin stripped and dried. It gets off the dirt, the debris. You can use it as a second step in a double cleanse or as a standalone cleanse. It's super versatile and it's great for using as a facial massage. So I love that. And that comes in at four pounds here 
in the UK. In the US, I think it's $8. Fantastic price point. If you want something a little bit different, and um, one that I do tend to reach for in winter, I've had it away. I actually need to check the date on it because it might have gone. I might need to buy another one, but that is the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. This one is fantastic because it's really, it smells divine. And um, you know, it has got some extracts and some oils in here. So you might want to be careful if you have particularly sensitive skin, but it smells divine. It is gorgeous, gorgeous when you put it on the skin. The soy is calming and soothing. So if you've got some of that irritation from, you know, the weather, the wind, the cold, then it's fantastic at calming and soothing that. It leaves your skin beautifully fresh and hydrated. And I just love, love, love this cleanser. It's a little bit too rich and thick for me for a summer cleanse. But as we come into winter and my skin gets a little bit drier, this honestly is like a reach for, I absolutely love this product. Now we've moved on, we've done our cleanse, we've got the right cleanser in our life and we move on to exfoliation. It is still crucial. I see so many people stop exfoliating in winter. They're like, no, my skin's too dry, it's too sensitive, I'm, I'm not gonna do it going there. I think, why? Because your skin is duller in winter. So in fact, you really need to up your exfoliation game rather than tone it down. However, I do think you might want to switch up your exfoliator. My go-to in summer is glycolic acid, the 7% toning solution by The Ordinary. Holy grail, I love that product. However, I think in winter, glycolic acid can be a little bit stripping and drying for the skin. It is quite a drying acid anyway, so you might want to think about how you can incorporate some hydration into your exfoliation routine. My go-to has to be lactic acid. I love it so much, I did a whole video on it, which I'll link up there. As soon as my skin starts to dry in winter, I move to a lactic acid exfoliator. My go-to is The Ordinary. They do two strengths. They do a 5% and they do a 10%. The 5% is great for people who have sensitive skin and want um, lactic acid is super hydrating. So not only is it exfoliating, also hydrates the skin, which offsets some of that dryness. So the 5% is great for people with sensitive skin that want a gentle, low strength exfoliator with that hydration built in. The 10% are for people like me who you know, you've got the glycolic acid in the summer and you want to just transition to something that's pretty much equivalent in winter, but with the added hydration. You get that in the 10% lactic acid where, um, from The Ordinary. Love, love, love that product. Both are formulated in a hyaluronic acid base, which is just going to give you that extra hydration. I think it's just really nice products. They are not the only lactic acids out there on the market. So check that video out if you do want to explore some other ones that are available. But these are both like £6 here in the UK, $8, super affordable. I like that you've got the strength that you can choose from to tailor to what your skin needs. Just a really nice addition. I've left a link, by the way, to all these products in the description box below if you want to check them out. And um, they're all in stock at the time of filming this video. So if you want to make a purchase, you want to check the ingredients list, see some of the reviews, click on the links below. So you've cleansed, you've got rid of some of that dullness, that lifeless winter skin with a really robust yet gentle exfoliation. And then you're going to want to think about hydrators. For me in winter, it's all about the hydration. You know, in summer, I don't like too much hydration in my life because I find I'm greasy, I'm oily anyway. In winter, all our skin, even someone who's acne prone and oily skinned like myself, we dry a little bit. So in winter, we need to think about our hydration game. I think it's a really good time to include a humectant in your life if you do want to increase the levels of hydration in your skin. People tend to reach for the hyaluronic acid all the time, which is fine. It's included in that lactic acid recommendation I just men I mentioned, and hyaluronic acid is really good. But there are so many other options. I just think we should branch out a little bit from traditional hyaluronic acids. And one of my absolute favorite is po the polyglutamic acid by the Inculist. Polyglutamic acid is actually more um, hydrating as a humectant than um, hyaluronic acid. Humectants work by drawing um, moisture to them and locking it in the skin. Polyglutamic acid is, depends on which studies you look at, about twice to four times more effective than hyaluronic acid at locking in that hydration. Now, in summer, nobody needs that level of hydration. I see people reaching for the polyglutamic acid and some are like, well, what are you doing? But if in winter you have that dry skin, this could be your absolute savior. Another product I absolutely love to include, and this is the one that I go for in winter, is the Amino Acids Plus B5 by The Ordinary. This is an absolute standout performance product, and why I love it is it's packed full of amino acids, which are present in our skin anyway. They're one of the hydrating elements our skin naturally needs and uses, and these are all skin compatible amino acids, which means they're already present in our skin, so it's not gonna create sensitivity or irritation because the skin recognizes them as something that should be there. It's also got B5, which is panthenol in here, which is superb at lessening redness and calming sensitivity in the skin. So if you feel in winter, you tend to be a bit more sensitive, your skin, skin tends to be a little bit redder, just a bit more, uh, you know, inflamed, sensitive, whatever, this could be a holy grail product for you. It hydrates with the amino acids and that addition of panthenol is just gonna calm and soothe the skin. It's absolutely stunning. I think it's one of the unsung heroes from The Ordinary and one that I really love to reach for, particularly because polyglutamic acid is 
is great, but I don't feel I need to that level of hydration in my life. This is a nice mid-strength hydrator. It'll give a nice extra hydration, but it's calming, it's soothing, and it's just what my skin needs when we come into those slightly windy, you know, a little bit more aggressive on our skin climates as we come into winter. Now we've moved from hydrators and we're going on to the other serums. This is really simple because I don't actually think you need to change anything else in your routine. You might want to mix up your exfoliator, switch your cleanser and consider adding a humectant or hydrator. Beyond that, everything is pretty much the same. There's a few things you might want to think about when you're looking at replacing products as they, um, you know, as they run out as we come into winter. And that is vitamin C, L-ascorbic acid, which is the truest form of vitamin C, can be a little bit drying on our skin. If you already have dry skin, which is particularly exacerbated in winter, you might, might want to reach for a derivative of vitamin C instead of L-ascorbic acid, because they're much more hydrating, less likely to cause um, dryness, and I think are more compatible with winter skin. I won't give any recommendations here, because I actually did a whole video on vitamin C derivatives recently, which I'll link up there. So check that out, because you might want to switch up your vitamin C, still keep it in your life, but switch it up, so you can still get that gorgeous, bright complexion, that luminosity which vitamin C brings, but you don't necessarily need need to be using an allascorbic acid if it's particularly drying on your skin. Retinols is something people always, always mention. Do you stop your retinol in winter? Retinols can be quite drying and your skin's quite dry in winter. Do you stop? Do you change? I tend to advise you don't. The reason for that is retinols need, our skin needs to become accustomed to retinols and retinoids. And so we go through that awkward like 12 week period at the start where we're a bit red, we're a bit itchy, we're a bit flaky, all the retinol nasties, and then you get gorgeous skin on the outside. I don't think you want to be mixing it up too often with your retinols. Let your skin get accustomed to the product you're using. Let those gorgeous results shine through and then stick with it. I'd say if you've already met, you know, gone through that retinol journey, you've gone through that 12 weeks and you're at the other side, keep with what you're doing over winter because you don't want to mix it up and then have to start from the st scratch again. By the time you've done that, you're in spring and you know the whole thing was pointless. So I keep to the same retinol that you're using. Finally, when it comes to moisturizers, everyone thinks the solution to winter skin is just upping your, getting a more occlusive moisturizer. I don't feel that it really is. I think if you're using the right cleanser, if you're using the right exfoliator and you're using a nice humectant in your routine, the moisturizer actually just caps everything off. You don't need a super occlusive moisturizer, particularly because, you know, as we're going from, you know, the cold outside into the heating, then we sweat and it's just all this bit grim to have that level of occlusive moisturizer on our skin. What I would recommend is just take your standard moisturizer that you've bought and that you've been using all summer and just drop a few drops of your favorite um, facial oil into it. My favorite is the rose hip seed oil by the ordinary but you know there's so many different oils on the market i'll link a video i did where i just explored all the different facial oils so you can choose the right one for you two drops of that in your moisturizer ups the occlusivity level a little bit which you might need as you come into winter but does it make you feel like you're wearing a mask you get more hydration but you're not mixing it up and getting a whole different product in your life and i just think that's the better way forward than i see people reach for these super occlusive vaseline like moisturizers and slathering them on actually that's not great and it it can be actually a bit, it can do the opposite of what you want it to do in your skin because it can create that mask, that layer, which means that the skin's natural functions can't really go on as we would want them to do. It's harder for it to evaporate the heat from the skin. And so it's just not a pleasant experience. So I would fully recommend you just drop two drops of your favorite facial oil into your existing moisturizer and you are you are ready for winter and whatever the winter weather throws at your skin. Right guys, I hope this has helped. Uh, let me know if you're going to incorporate any of these products into your routine. Leave me a comment below. What are your winter skin holy grails? The things you cannot live without as the climate gets colder. Leave me a comment below. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere and you know quite a few of our viewers and subscribers are, I do apologize, but in six months time, this video will be a lifesaver for you. So enjoy your summer while you can. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.